The lights on Alcatraz Island didn't just fail, they were swallowed by the San Francisco fog. At 11.04 p.m., the prison known as Inescapable plunged into a silence broken only by the distant horn of a ferry. For 96 seconds, the rock was blind. When emergency power restored the harsh glare, one cell was empty. Elias Vance was gone. His cell was a tomb. The bed was tight, no sheets missing. There was no tunnel through concrete soaked with sea spray, only a single surgical cut in the chain link, high on the perimeter fence. Warden Cox stared at the bay. This was an inside job, a betrayal as cold as the currents. The security logs from the blackout were a perfect, infuriating void. The manhunt found nothing but his standard issue boots, placed neatly on a dock like a grave marker. Vance hadn't just escaped the island, he had conquered the myth itself. He left behind no body, only a terrifying question. If he didn't drown, what was the plan so grand it was worth attempting the impossible? Yeah, I made this video totally using AI-generated video and you YouTube automation. If you already know, there's a channel called Fern, and this YouTube channel is blowing up with cinematic 3D animations. In their videos, they're using a lot of mannequin figures, and it's really effective for this kind of content. There were a few channels like them, and guess what? They're all actually killing it. In May 2025 alone, Fern pulled in over 20 million views. As someone who understands YouTube, I'd estimate their RPM is at least around $10. So that's $200,000. This is an insane amount. But I also know these types of videos, which look simple, are actually deeply engineered. To make these types of videos, they use a program called Blender. And from personal experience, that thing is hell to learn. But in this video, you don't ever need that crazy thing to make videos like that. I made it totally with AI tools. And in this video, I will help you make it too. I will reveal everything step by step step from how you can generate scripts, to generate images, to video, to voiceover. Using the secret tool, which is Gary Studio, which I created and continue to develop to make it the best tool for YouTube automation and AI content creation. So stick with me until the end of this video. I promise what I show you in this video is the highest level tutorial that no other gurus can teach you. First things first, to make this video, it's actually never easy when it's the first time making this kind of content. I think a lot and try to come up up with ideas, like this prison break short film. So like usual, I use ChatGPT to write the script. For most content, I will type a prompt like this. You are a script writer. Create a highly engaging script for my YouTube video about documentary on the prison break that happened in Alcatraz, San Francisco. Do not include narration, timestamps, or titles. Just full script for the voiceovers. In this prompt, I want to explain that, first, at the beginning of the prompt, you need to add you are a script writer, so ChatGPT will know its role. This will give you a more stable result. Next, you have to add some keywords from your own mind. This part, no one can really help you with. It's very simple. Just type out what's in your head. And actually, this kind of prompt is what I usually start with. Then, I will not submit this prompt right away. I could do it, but what I usually do is refine it by adding at the beginning. Please refine this prompt. For the model, make sure you select ChatGPT 5 Instant. I don't recommend using ChatGPT Auto or GPT Thinking for this process because the result often becomes too complex. For testing, we don't need a prompt that is too long or filled with unnecessary words. Keep it specific. So just do it like that and submit the prompt. Very quickly, you'll get a better version. After that, I copy the prompt generated from ChatGPT, paste it back into the chat box, and submit it again. This time, ChatGPT will give me the first script result. Remember, this is just the first step, and it's never easy to get exactly what you want on the first try, especially when you're creating good content for YouTube. Now, I will scroll up and let's review the previous prompt and script together, so you can see how just a small step made the script prompt so much better. First, you'll notice more specific keywords were added to my original prompt. You'll see words like captivating, immersive, and infamous. You'll also see phrases like vivid and cinematic, designed to hold the viewer's attention from start to finish, or written in a storytelling style that blends historical accuracy with suspense and drama, which is exactly what I wanted. So this is now a perfect and concise prompt. But remember, it won't always generate perfect results. So always review the output like I'm doing now to make sure you craft the perfect prompt. Otherwise, just remove what's not correct and redo the steps. Next, let's review the script result. 
As you can see and read in the script for the video, it's actually a very good script. This is because the previous prompt was crafted with enough correct theme and context, so the result matches exactly what I wanted. I really like this result, and if I'm making a long-form video, you can definitely use this script that I got on the first generation. But for making a demo video, or the first minute of your videos, you can't use this script, because you have to create the hook first, and to make that hook script, you have to prompt like this. The script above is great, but for now, please write a short atmospheric thriller vignette set on Alcatraz. Use vivid sensory details, suspenseful pacing, and leave the ending unresolved with a chilling question, about 150 words in total. Then I submit this prompt and let's see the result. This script is now more engaging and perfect for hooking viewers before you tell the full story. Now you might ask, how can I prompt like this? When I first started doing this, I didn't know words like atmospheric thriller vignette or suspenseful pacing, and leave the ending unresolved with a chilling question. I actually got these keywords from studying what already worked well in other videos. For example, if I find a good script online, here's what I do. I paste it into ChatGPT. You can use any model you want. In this case, I'd choose GPT-5, instant like before, and after the script I prompt. How can I phrase my prompt concisely to achieve this script result? Then I submit, and very quickly, I have what I want in just a few seconds. Very easy steps, but I still remind you, it won't always give the best result. You have to review and remove what you don't want, keep what you do want, and test this to gain experience yourself. Now you already know how to craft prompts for scripting. Next, I'll guide you on how to create character images. For generating character images, first I also reuse what already works. So I open a Fern video and find the scene with the character I want. Then I screen capture it to get the image. After that, I upload this image into ChatGPT and prompt like this. I have this character. Please create a portrait image of this character and hit enter to submit. Just wait a little bit and then I'll have a portrait image of my character. From this image, you can create another image if you want. You can change the outfit from this orange t-shirt to anything else. Anything is possible with AI now, especially with ChatGPT. It's the best model for generating images, but it also has the highest cost. Now that I already have what I want, I'll guide you on how to use Gary Studio to generate the rest of the things you need. In Gary Studio, just input your account details and click Login to access the AI tool. Next, you'll see an option too. Use Reference Image for Consistent Character. Just turn this on, and you'll see an input field where you can enter your image name. What you need to do here is download your image from ChatGPT and place it in the Reference Image folder. This folder is in the same location as the Gary Studio app, and you'll have this folder after installing Gary Studio. Next, you need to copy your image file name and paste it into the input field. I've already set up validation, so if the file name is incorrect, you'll know right away. Once you have a valid image, the Generate button will turn on, and you're good to go. You might wonder, how can Gary Studio generate images without a prompt? Well, this feature allows generating images if your prompts have been prepared in JSON format. In the Gary Studio folder, you'll see a file named All Prompts here. If you've already prepared your image prompts, just copy and paste all your prompts into this file. You can put 100, 200, or however many prompts you want, and the app will automatically generate images for you. Now, if you don't have any prompts prepared yet and you want Gary Studio to generate everything, from full script to image prompts to all images, in a single click, you just need to do this. In the script prompt section, copy your script prompt from the previous demo and paste it into this text box. For now, I've copied the script prompt for the hook or intro of the video. Next, in the image prompt field, I paste something like this. Each prompt should be written like a film storyboard shot with camera angle, specific subject, details, atmospheric description, style or mood tags, narrative implication. To craft this image style prompt, nothing is different from what I did with the script prompt. I won't go into detail here, just do it yourself or you can reuse my prompt. After that, just click Generate and Gary Studio will create everything. The script, image prompts, and all images. All your content, scripts, image prompts, and images will be saved in the All Content Data folder and you don't need to do anything more. Next, let's open the JSON file. You'll see all your scripts saved here, along with all image prompts and image file names. At the bottom, you'll also see the ChatGPT thread ID saved. 
By doing this, the AI tool can track your status, and you can resume the task anytime by using the existing generation option. All you need to do is input your JS and file name right here, and the app will continue with your work. This makes Gary Studio so much more powerful than Make.com or any other AI tools. They can't do this as easily. Next, you'll see the Total Images option here. If you leave it blank, the app will auto-calculate the total images for you. For now, I calculate total images based on every 10 words of script. For example, this will generate about 150 words of script, so the total image prompts or images created is 15 images. If you want more than that, like one image for every five words of script, you just input 30 right here. Really cool, right? Let's check out all the images, and you can see that all images have a consistent character in 3D style like the Fern channel. But for the video, we don't need the same consistent character to appear in every single scene like this. There's a simple way to do this without much effort. What you need to do now is just turn off the option Use Reference Image for Consistent Character and generate another version. After that, you'll have two versions with more images to choose from, and you can make a video with all the variety you need. Next, if you want to generate a long-form script for your 3D documentary style video, all you need to do is replace the script prompt for short scripts with a script prompt for long scripts. For total words, you can input 4,000 words right here, and this will help you make a video about 30 minutes long. For now, chat GPT-5. Thinking already allows you to generate a full script like this in a single run, but for image prompts, you can't generate everything in one go. For example, if your script length is 4,000 words and you need one image for each 10 words, you'll need 400 image prompts. If each image prompt has 50 words, then to generate 400 image prompts, ChatGPT would need to generate about 20,000 words, and that's impossible. When you request 400 image prompts, your result will be truncated and it can't deliver what we want. So now you'll see the image prompt segment option right here, where you can input about 20 to 100 in this text field. When you have 400 image prompts and you input 100 into this text box, Gary Studio will split the 400 image prompts into 100 image prompts prompts into four segments. Each segment will be 100 image prompts, as you can see right here. With four runs, you'll have everything we need with all prompts generated in high-quality results. This feature is another reason why this AI tool is the best tool for YouTube automation or your faceless channels. Everything is already working perfectly with version 1.1, which I just released in the community. When you click on OpenAI key right here, you can put your OpenAI API key and use it for your generation. When you do this, you'll get fast faster results, but you have to pay for what you use. You can use it for scripting, image prompts, or even image generation by checking these checkboxes. But remember, when using Gary Studio normally, you're totally free. However, when using this option, make sure to use it only when you actually want fast results for testing image styles, script styles, or something like that, because it's very expensive. Here, you can click on the image generation tab. Just choose the image size, landscape, square, or portrait, or choose the quality like low, medium, or high quality. Then, paste all your prompts in this text box, click Generate, and you can create all your images with your OpenAI API key without using Python scripts or any complex steps. Next, you can see buttons like Minimax Audio, Eleven Labs, and Kling AI here, where you can input your API keys, and Gary Studio will connect to these platforms and generate everything for you. These features will be integrated in October, and this is not all I will integrate into this awesome AI tool. You can see YouTube video right here, which will help you generate all long-form content videos in a single click. I already created a demo in Python, but this October I will include it in Gary Studio as well, where you just click and, and have a full video with high-quality content. Next, let's head over to the next part, how I generate voiceovers. This is actually where you need to invest more time to get the best voice for your video or your channel. Like my other videos, this voice I used in the 3D style video from the beginning uses Eleven Labs. I know Eleven Labs is high cost, so if your budget is low, you can consider using Minimax Audio, which is 80% cheaper than Eleven Labs. In Minimax Audio, you can clone a voice from any voice you want at a very affordable price. I tried this, and actually the clone voice quality is very high, about 80 to 90% as good as the original voice. In Eleven Labs, just go to Voices on the left sidebar, then click on Filter. A pop-up will appear for you to choose options. For language, I'm going to 
choose English. For accent, I'll choose American. Then for the category of this 3D documentary style, I'll choose informative and educational, and click apply filter and close the pop-up. Next, make sure you're sorting the voice list by trending, which is the best option you should use every time. Then you'll choose this voice, Vincent Sparks, deep American voice. This is the voice I used for the video. It's a really good voice, and I recommend you try it for your channel. After choosing your great voice, in the text-to-speech feature of Eleven Labs, you just need to paste your script here. Then for the voice settings, set them up like this. For speed, I'll go with default. For stability, I'll adjust to 81%. For similarity, I'll go with 55%. And for style exaggeration, I'll set about 25%. Make sure to turn on Speaker Boost, and then click the Generate Speech button. You'll have what you want with a great voiceover for this script. Now, let's move on to the next part, AI Video Generators, for these 3D style videos, like the Fern Channel. For this purpose, I also use what I usually use, which is Kling AI. Kling AI is the best tool for generating video from images with affordable cost and high quality. You can use the free version as well. And of course, with the free version, you have to wait more and have limited generations per day. As you can see on screen, these AI videos are generated via Kling AI. In this video, I just use this prompt, rotating camera. This is actually the most effective prompt I think you can use most frequently. In another image, I use this prompt a cinematic scene, dynamic camera movements, and the same prompt for this one. Really impressive, right? In the later part of the video, you can see some distortion. It's very normal when the object is too far, and the resolution is just full HD. So just trim it in your video editor tool. For this Alcatraz prison, I used this prompt. A cinematic prison break scene, dynamic camera movements, dramatic push-ins, sweeping pans, and rotating shots. This will be used for more intense shots with fast camera movement. It's very catchy and cinematic, so you have to balance between these prompts. When making these videos, I created some more styles and videos like you see here. This is actually impressive as well. I can use it as video footage, but I can't use it as a demo because it's a different style. But you can think about applying this to your video channel if it suits your vision. I always do these things for each of my videos because it not only gives me more experience and skills, it also helps me deliver the best type of content for my audience and my community members. Finally, I have to combine everything into one video using After Effects. For beginners, it's really a challenging thing to learn, and what you don't know is that you need a strong PC to generate videos like mine, because I use 4K resolution. Actually, I'm using an RTX 5070Ti, and it still lags so much when making just this short video. With After Effects, you can achieve high-end, smooth camera movements and text animations, like in this video. But you know what? I'm thinking about building a server and integrating this into a YouTube video feature for my journey of solving math in the YouTube automation niche. After Effects or Adobe Premiere Pro both allow us to create scripts for automating content. By doing this, we can produce videos with dynamic movement and minimal effort. This is what I plan to do in the future. So if you're a beginner or still stuck on creating high quality YouTube content, you need Gary Studio to speed up your workflow. You also need someone with experience to teach and guide you in detail. Just join my community. Gary Studio is totally free for all members. If you don't know, Leonardo AI costs $10 for 8,500 credits, which only generates about 20 images using GPT Image 1. With Gary Studio, you can generate up to 120 high-quality images, saving you a ton of money. GPT Image 1 is the highest quality model for AI image generation. And with Gary Studio, you can generate for free and effortlessly. That's it for this video. I hope to see you inside the community soon. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you found this valuable. Comment below if you still have any questions. I'll read and answer all your comments. See you in the next video.